Hello my soccer universe! The last two weeks saw a whole lot of new national team shirt releases, mostly Adidas and Nike. However, they have also been, we saw new Denmark shirts, which I think are alright, we saw new Ireland shirts, but it's mostly Adidas with Nike. And this poses, of course, the natural question, who did it better, Adidas or Nike? Remember, ahead of the last World, World Cup, uh, the universal opinion was that everything Adidas did uh, turned out to be gold and everything Nike did was kind of meh. But when you look closer, uh, at least it was sometimes very templative for Adidas, especially those back uh, panels that I still don't like, uh, that actually didn't do it for me. Whereas for Nike, the template was not really good. Uh, but within the template, there were some really nice jerseys uh, made. For instance, I really think I really like the France home jersey. I also thought that the Brazil home jersey was a true stunner. So, you know. We were going to ask the same question here as well by just looking at a few examples. Now, I already did a video uh, on uh, the Adidas uh, leaked jerseys so before the releases, which you can find here. I did something very similar also for the Nike jerseys, which you also can find here, which focus on the big European nations. In this video, I actually want to branch out a little bit, more, not only go uh, to smaller European nations that I have qualified or may, may not even have qualified to, for Europe, for the Euros, but also uh, go a little bit uh, outside of Europe because there were quite some South American releases and North American releases and uh, you know a couple of African Asian ones in there as well that I wanna at least briefly have mentioned. But before we go into it, we have to talk, of course, about the biggest news, the biggest short news, I think in a decade at least. And that is that Germany announced that starting 2027, they will be supplied by Nike. <laughs> to me, this is was unfathomable. I think this was one of the strongest partnerships. Adidas, to me, had always two cornerstones in their whole arsenal. That is Germany and is Bayern Munich, the two most German things with Adidas. Now, I first opinion, I have always wondered how would Germany look without Adidas? I mean, Nike, when they took over the French Football Federation, who actually they might be losing, um, I was wondering um, how will this will, will work out? And I have to say the first few tries were meh, but meanwhile, I think France jerseys by Nike are universally almost better than, I mean, unless we go back to the real, real classics that uh, Adidas have made, and we're talking here 80s, and uh, probably earlier, uh, I would say that Nike have done a better job as of late. It's my personal opinion. I know I might be alone in that one. So I was always wondering for German, German as well, because uh, the one thing that Nike can do, they're not bogged down by the three stripes. And yes, for Euro 2016, the three stripes went onto the side, which freed up the shoulder. And finally, actually, I felt that Adidas jerseys breathed a little bit more again, which is something, yes, the three stripes sometimes can look wonderful. But at times they're limiting as well, and it's probably better to have them as side striping, and they are using this way too little. And I always wondered about the Germany shirt. And I think uh, with Nike taking over, we probably have the chance of getting a little bit more classic looking jerseys. I know that Nike will also mess this up again, but at least the final product and the jerseys, I want to go in there with an open mind because let's face it, I, although I really like the current Germany jerseys that have been released. I think they are wonderful, especially in the long sleeved version. As of late, Germany jerseys have been kind of meh. A lot of trying and not saying, you know, it got a little bit tired with putting all the um, black, red, gold everywhere and so on. Uh, it got a little bit cumbersome and not every everything worked out well. Uh, and the same thing was true for France, that sometimes uh, going over template, it did not work out for ideas. So I think I want to go in there with an open mind and not, uh, damn it, I know that this is a hard pill to swallow for many. Because, I mean, it's the quintessential German car company with the quintessential German sports team. They were a match made in heaven. I totally agree with that. But I think there are three things that are really puzzling me. And I promise we get back to the jurors, but I, I want to talk about it. The first thing is the timing. You know, you just had released new Adidas shirts. Your second to last set. Why announce this now? Why also ahead of a Euros that you host by yourself? Uh, that you host, host, Adidas is all over. Why? This doesn't make sense. 
The second thing that I found rather curious is that, well, they just accepted Nike's offer, which was uh, more than double what Adidas are currently offering. We were talking 50 million versus 100 million euros or more than 100 million euros. They did not go back to Adidas to say, you know, guys, you need to up your offer because we we are about to take this one. That seems a little bit weird, but on the other side, it's business. And uh, I am pretty sure that Adidas is probably going to try to win that contract back because this is their marquee contract. Uh, in addition, what's really weird with this one is that the German national team is exactly in Herzogen Aurach quartered for uh, for their entire uh, tour to tournament. So that's the headquarter city of Adidas and Puma. So that was interesting. Uh, and then the whole reaction to it was also, yeah, I mean, basically everyone in politics, uh, everyone that has something to say got, got, got involved with it. I guess it's modern times and yes, we would like to live in times when that, that well is. It is down to money. And at the moment, the DFB needs money. The, the national is not a cash cow again. And you know, that money come coming in probably can, can be used in a youth development project as well. And we know that Nike is doing financially a whole lot better than Adidas. But let's go back. So in that case, Nike won for now, but let's go back uh, to um, comparing the releases. Um, just a few cornerstones. What I found uh, is general uh, Adidas, all very templatey. And I pull in here uh, the picture of the Hungry Home home jersey, which basically shows the basic Adidas template quite well. And all the pictures here I've taken from footy headlines uh, this time. So you see a little bit of, of that, that one as well. Uh, we have its team guys inspired we have these slivers coming on the front and then we sometimes have the patches here on the shoulders color as well i'm not so bothered with the slivers on the bottom a little bit more bothered with this one here uh if that is co a color different unless it works out i think here in the case of the hungary jersey i think a plain red would have worked better for me i also think that the color could, could have used for instance a flag color but you know those are my uh minor complaints we also have another thing is that uh, the pattern, these slivers continue onto the pants, which actually looks really, really cool uh, when it's right lined up, but it, it can look really cool. So the, it's quite a dynamic look. Uh, and the other thing with Adidas that I've observed is that they have uh, the away jerseys are very heavily inspired by goalkeeper jerseys. I cannot say it in anything else because uh, it's new colors and it's usually some odd looking stuff. There are some exceptions like the Belgium uh, away jersey. I would say the Argentina away jersey also doesn't look like goalkeeper like the same thing goes for Venezuela. But pretty much every other jersey I think could very well see as a goalkeeper jersey as well. So kind of a little bit out there. Uh, and and we'll talk about this just as a sec. I also see that uh, the more templated versions are the big teams, whereas smaller teams got some really nice additions that actually make them probably more standout jerseys than the ones for, 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 the, for the big teams, which on one side I can understand for the big teams, you want to showcase, you know, your base technology and uh, go it all out because the, the, those will sell anyway, whereas for the smaller teams, very, very often you need to have something special that they sell. And I think Adidas did a good job there overall. Uh, when we go for Nike, Nike got rid of this very modular template with, you know, this arc here and, and the, uh, the, the, the boomerang shape that they had here. Uh, going back uh, to a more traditional look, I think most of them are regular short sleeves. I don't think they've met that many raglan sleeves, but I might be wrong on this one. We'll see when it goes. Uh, the big thing for Nike are is the color game. I mean, they have three base colors. We have this four shirt color that we see on the England and Brazil home jerseys uh, very well. We have then a round color that can be um, uh, patched into two parts like at the US jersey, um, which I think adds an interesting e element. But for instance, for uh, other teams, they didn't do that. Like I'm, I'm looking at the Netherlands here where it's just a regular round color. So that looks all right to me. And then they have the asymmetric colors. Uh, France home jersey, Portugal home jersey, we have the Netherlands away jersey also have such a color uh, which is, you know, looks a little bit odd but actually doesn't bother me that that much, especially for the France jersey, I think, uh, given that it's a flag color, it doesn't look all that crazy, but it's Nike doing Nike things. So um, I guess for me it's more of an 
nuisance without being really bothersome overall. Other than that, they went for the home churches mostly with a classic look with gigantic crests. Looking at France, I saw Poland, I think also Brazil, really gigantic crests, uh, which I, is a uh, uh, stuff that I like. The technology is, of course, the way we have it. They also have breathable crests, so this is a two layered C system where there is like a mesh below, and then they have the applications in some uh, silicone over, which I think it makes it look really uh, well on the player issue uh, is on the ones that I will go, go, go for. I'm happy to see that the Dutch Lion is back on nicely stitched as, as I like, unlike for the last iteration, same thing goes for the France Crest. So these uh, are, are some stylings that I, or general points, that I have observed. Uh, similarly, as for Adidas, I think that the big nations probably got a, not as much Adidas, but you know, especially home 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 jerseys are rather more classy slash classic looking without going wild and then the away jerseys usually introduce a new color or a new idea whereas for smaller teams actually we get some quite spiffy designs there so let me run through a few uh, Adidas examples uh, to tell you that we haven't that I haven't talked about yet. We already talked about uh, Hungary. The Hungary home home dress is very tempt template, but I think uh, overall kind of all right. The away jersey does something similar, but adds another twist to it. The sliver actually is in the Hungarian flag co uh, colors, which is something I really really like. Now I have this Hungary jersey, the previous one here, and I gotta say, similar to there, the white is a little bit thinner. I do prefer this treatment but I think this is a really really nice touch that works quite well I gotta say. Uh, we have Scotland, the it's kind of mad jerseys. I think the home jersey has nice yellow numbers on it uh, but I think that it's a little bit too messy. It's a tartan pattern which is cool but it's a, a messy one and the away, 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 away jersey I really is one of the most boring ones that uh, Adidas have done. An outstanding set and probably the best that Adidas have released from Euro European teams is Wales. I really love the sliver, similar to Hungary. It's even with more color colors and it connects very nicely with the pants. Also, there's no slivers here. Really nice. And the away jersey uh, does something, something similar, but the pattern on the side, uh, they use this panel really, really well to make something outstanding there. Northern Ireland also very unique, although here I think the white sliver kind of distracts a little bit from the overall pattern, which is nice. The away jersey though works really, really fine. Uh, you don't even make it out that, that, that much. So those are really well done. Um, Argentina, <clears throat> yeah, home jersey, okay. I liked it. It's nothing special. The away jersey, I think, is a little bit more special, especially since the third star is in white and the other ones are in blue. And the slivers have kind of an Argentina flag in there, but not really. So uh, that's weird. Um, then we have a uh, Colombia. I think I don't like either one of them in, in, in particular. Same thing goes for Chile. Is just yes, it's an Adidas jersey in Chile. Yes, there is a pattern in there that's in, in, interesting that makes out the star from the flag but nothing really talk home about. For Peru, the, I think the base idea is great, having golden shoulders, uh, you have the sash, but the slivers completely mess up the sash. But this jersey has, has at least some promise. Um, the away jersey, blah, uh, Venezuela, I think a very nice looking, but I don't think this is the modern template uh, for Venezuela. And then we have the away jer uh, jersey with a really weird pattern. So not so sold about that one. And I'll leave probably the craziest for last, which is of course Mexico. The Mexico home jersey is one that I still cannot make my mind up. I really love the feather pattern uh, that's there, but to me it's almost a little bit too geometric, but that's exactly how I think the Aztecs did it, so I understand where this is coming from. Again, I think the slivers distract a little bit too much from it, but it's very Mexican. However, what's uh, I would always expect a green Mexico home jersey, but then Adidas have been regularly releasing non-green ones for the non-World Cup tournament, so we had black ones, we had red ones. Uh, did, 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 did we have red ones? No, I don't think red ones were an old, old color, but we had different colors. This one's definitely out there. I think this is aimed more at the collectors. I have the feeling and yeah, I don't know where I better go. The away jersey, a similar idea, but um, 
the colors to me are totally off. So that's the Adidas part. I think there's some really, I mean, Wales, I have to comment, this is probably the, uh, the really outstanding one. Uh, of the ones that I've shown you now. If we go now to on the Nike side, I, uh, first thing first, the Turkey jerseys, um, they look basic, but they have some interesting patterning on there, which I think makes it really cool to me, uh, especially the, um, the away jersey, the plain red one, actually is quite nice to look at on close up. And both of the Brazil jerseys I'm not fond of. The home jersey looks normalish. I mean, it has the side panels and the, the, that go onto the sleeve cuffs. Um, I don't even mind the color, although it looks a little bit weird. Um, what I don't like is the pattern on the shirt. And same thing goes for the away jer jer jersey, which I think if you go with the darker color that might do some, something or you go with a you know, different, it's just, yeah, don't like it. Let's put it that way. Uh, we have also the USA, very American jersey, but I have to say there's something about it that I enjoy. I probably would wish that one sleeve was blue and the other one with the stripes. That would be cool, but I think it, uh, the flag inspiration is pretty cool. Uh, the away jersey, uh, <laughs> I know this should go back to the 1950 jer jersey, but in the worst possible way, because you know the sash was way higher up, up there. It, 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 it's a popsicle jersey. Canada really has received new jerseys, and the most interesting thing is no, no new crest, it still looks awful. Uh, we have this asymmetric round collar, like for, 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 for 40 years, but look at the Nike logo. This used to be on hockey jerseys like that. I think that's pretty cool, um, but you know, it's also a little bit blah. Uh, I think the sleeves, yeah, <sighs> it's not the greatest jer of, jer uh, of jerseys, but at least I get something bespoke. The away jersey though, I think is a little bit nicer with the 13 pin straps for the sta uh, states and provinces. I think there is something uh, there. Then uh, Poland, the home jersey, Classic Poland. I love the big eagle crest, similar for France. The away jersey is a little bit more adventurous. Uh, but I think uh, Poland is just about fine. And then we come to proper the biggest disappointment before we go into some really, really, really interesting ones. And one no, not in the biggest disappointment for me is Croatia. I knew that Croatia is gonna at one point really inflate the squares. Well, they did that. They did that. Half, half, and no. I'm sorry. And if you make the squares have at least made make them such a way that the Nike logo and the Confederation logo are centered on it and not riding up high, it looks awful. It really looks awful. This is uh, one of the most disappointing shirts. Uh, my um, boss is of Croatian heritage and he was devastated when he saw that one already based on the last one that he was not no, not so the last great one for Croatia I, I would I would argue is the one that's hanging back there the 2016 one this is how the checkerboards should be uh, let's stick with one disappointment when I saw the China shirts I said okay yeah you cannot do more red with black and then the other one uh, white with come on come on China deserves better honestly but let's talk about some more special ones. Uh, I want to actually stay in Asia. I think South Korea, there is something about it. This is uh, based on some old, uh, you know, architecture or you know, pottery patterns and so on. Uh, the home jersey. I mean, it's not that I'm really um, taken by it, but I think it offers something unique. The away jersey uh, with the swirly stuff. I think if it was a little bit more on your nose, Similar to the Portugal to Portugal jersey, I think probably would enjoy this a teeny bit more. But we need to leave with the B two biggest talking points. I think the first one, uh, let's leave it on the positive side with Norway. I think Norway, they're not qualified. However, they have two really big stars with the third one about to come. Their home jersey, I love that it's flag based. But my, my first thought was not yeah, great. It was, hey, why not use the cross a little bit more? 
That was honestly my first reaction. Uh, when we look at it, I think they do something really cool. I mean, the blue center stripe with the white and then uh, the red. I honestly would have probably enjoyed it if the red was just one uh, shade and not three shades, but it's something really striking, sim uh, simply outstanding. Uh, it goes with blue pants here in the picture, which I'm also not entirely sure about. I think it should be a little bit more red. But I think here everything centralized, it works well. It comes also with a pretty nice rune inspired font. Uh, the away jersey might be not so striking at first. However, it has an iridescent crest, which I think is a really cool feature. And it is, of course, ice and glacier inspired. Yeah, Norway up there. Um, I wish they would have done a Northern Lights kit as well. Uh, maybe a third idea. But the ice and snow one uh, fits quite well. I have a feeling, while well, the home one is more striking, I think that the away one might turn out to be a bigger classic. And then we have the complete Jekyll and Hyde release of the entire Nike set, which is, and why they do it now and not for the Afghan is for, to me, a big uh, mystery, Nigeria. Let's talk first about the really great looking away jersey. I love that one. It screams Nigeria, it's black, there's a little bit green uh, in there, it's, uh, it has some rainforesty theme in there. Really like that one, I think this has, uh, has some future. But then the home jersey needs to be a light one and they decide uh, A on a white one. Nigerian all white does not look right. But there's more to it, it's, they took a page out of Puma's book to go something completely wild and um, Puma goes all out over. They just did it for Nigeria, but there is no federation crest, except that the eagle is printed all the way on the back from the crest. They just say Niger, which is Nigeria with a red swoosh. So it's kind of a little blur, but when I showed it, for instance, to, to my wife, she said, oh, this is very, very modern looking. So I guess this is probably going into the high end fashion uh, end. But the craziest thing about this one, and we have not talked about it, is the color. A square color? Huh? I honestly, it doesn't come out in this picture too well. I think I would have to see this image. I don't think I will see Nigeria matches that soon. But that one is striking and something really odd and against the grain. I am not even sure how comfortable such a color is to wear. Because you know it's the v-neck but with two v's. Weird. That's definitely weird. So that's one that's out there. Overall, I think that the highs of Adidas are really, really high. Same thing goes for Nike. What I really love about Adidas is the smaller teams probably got the better jerseys with the exception, I would say, of Germany. Uh, Italy has been treated horribly by Adidas, in my idea. I think I don't like either of these jerseys. For Nike, if they would stop being quirky and just focus on the normal task, I think all of these jerseys would be really, really, really fine. With some exceptions, Croatia and Nigeria, but I think that I have not too much to complain about overall. So I think the base level for um, Nike because they're not so templated, although it is, but you know, if you have a template that has just a side strap that goes here, that's not a bad template. This is actually very Nike in a way. Um, you have a high base level. And yes, you can, if you like, mess up a shirt here and there. But overall, you're starting out much higher than with Adidas. With uh, typically Adidas, you have your three stripes, you have all the slivers. Uh, this might please others, it does not necessarily please me. I like my shirts relatively simple, but not every patch is highlighted. Adidas, for instance, Wales, they did outstanding there. Germany, outstanding work. And I would say that these jerseys are probably better than uh, anything that uh, Nike have produced. Uh, then we have some really, really, really questionable ones, especially the away jer uh, jerseys, which go totally against the grain of many away jerseys. So, that's my long and short. I would give it a slight win for Nike. Slight win for Nike. Um, but it's open. And now we're still waiting what Puma comes with. We saw the first leaks for Switzerland already. That's going to be interesting. Uh, I think Puma jerseys will be released next week, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because the international break is already over. But hey, 
I guess maybe some will be worn in the last friendlies when, for instance, Austria or Switzerland probably will have home games. Uh, Puma have only four teams at the Euros and they're not big ones. This is Austria, Switzerland, the Czech Republic and Serbia. Uh, I also want to note that two Nike teams have not released their jerseys yet. This is Slovakia, this is Slovenia. Uh, could mean two things to me that either these teams don't get new jerseys similar to what Canada had or they're looking to switch suppliers, but I saw Slovakia play today against Austria in their previous iterations, so I don't think the supplier change is imminent. I hope they will get a little bit of a better treatment than just repeating what they have been worn. But yeah, that's my opinion. Let me know yours. What do you think? Which jerseys did you like uh, here? Who is, who is better, Adidas or Nike? Adidas, when they're good, they can be really good, but uh, the margin of error is much larger for Adidas for me. And I would say that Nike produce a little bit more solid stuff. So I'm falling on the Nike side. I just wish that Nike would have taken over Italy like they did in the mid nineties. In any case, give me a thumbs up, enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.